Let me show you which of my tropical plants survived the winter. I'm just south of Seattle. This is zone 8A, 8B, depending on the winter. Now that we're a couple of months into warmer weather, we get a good sense for what survived and what didn't. If you're not familiar with Western Washington, it rains a lot in the winter, and that is a bigger problem for us than the cold. A lot of plants can survive our cold, but some of those cannot survive the constant wet that we have starting in October that doesn't end sometimes until July. A pretty typical winter for Seattle, average daily temperatures are going to be just above freezing um, to maybe 40 to 45 degrees for a high. That's a few degrees C. On the low end, nighttime lows are typically above freezing, and we get a couple of cold spells where for a few days to a week, a week and a half, we might have sub-freezing temperatures. That's kind of average. The average highs were really consistent this winter, so again, most days it's going to be about 40 degrees Fahrenheit, um, a, a few degrees Celsius, and either overcast, you know, very cloudy, or light drizzle rain. We had two weeks this year, two separate weeks, where each week the low temperatures got to about 15 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's about negative 10 C. And daytime highs did not get above freezing for a week. They were in the high 20s. So like negative, negative 2 to negative 4 C. Uh, for daytime highs and then nighttime lows well below freezing uh, in the 15 Fahrenheit negative 10 C range in, in that area. And typically when that happens, anything that I have in pots, I bring into the house if it's not already in the house. And it's a good thing to keep in mind that plants in pots are less hardy than plants in the ground. So let's take a look at some individual plants. So this is a golden lotus banana, survived just fine in the ground. It did die completely back to the ground, has started to grow back. Funny enough, I brought two of these into the house, one I had had in a pot ever since I got it. The other one I planted in the ground, dug it up and put it in a pot, brought that inside. Both of the plants that I brought inside completely died. They did fine for a while, then all of a sudden they just started drying out and didn't make it. So the one outside made it, the ones in the house did not. These are Manzano bananas. Manzanos are my favorite bananas. I lived in Puerto Rico for a while and these things are grown all over the island. I found I could get a couple, so I did. Unfortunately, they have suffered. One of them died pretty quickly. The other one made it through most of the winter, but started suffering towards the end of winter and looks like at this point uh, is, is not going to pull through. Another new variety of bananas that I tried that I got in the early fall, Vente Cojols. All three of these died as well. There seems to be something, at least with my house and growing, particularly the smaller bananas indoors, they seem to catch funguses pretty easy and uh, I'm going to try some things to see if I can get that to not be the case, but a lot of the little bananas just suffer apparently in my house They and they turn black and die. I left elephant ears in the ground and these are starting to come out. Now this spot right here in particular is covered by my neighbor's cedar tree, which means it doesn't actually get that wet right here during the winter. All the elephant ears look to be coming out. I've actually got a lot more this year than the bulbs that I planted last year. And so they're doing really well here. I have a few others in the front of the house. These are slowly coming back a little bit slower than the ones in the backyard that were kept dry, but they are coming back nonetheless. And we've got a few of them starting to pop up here in the front as well. Moving on to the pineapple lilies. This is another one. You're told around here that you should take them out of the ground if you want them to survive the winter just because they get soaked and, and rot out over the winter. I left all mine in the ground. I'm not about doing extra work if I don't have to. Left them all in the ground to see how they do. They actually are all coming back. Now, the ones here in the backyard do have a little bit of protection from the rain just because the bamboo gives them a little bit of cover. 
And in the front yard, there's this eave over the top of them. So they actually don't get wet at all in this little box in the front. Uh, but nonetheless, I left them all in the ground and I've got pineapple lilies coming back. The angel wing begonia, um, not unexpected, dead as a doornail, didn't survive, nothing growing, it's done. Um, I didn't expect it to survive, but I thought let's give it a shot and see what we can make happen. Now I did not protect this at all. And so I'm going to get a few more to grow in this spot from some cuttings and we'll try again in this next winter and I'll give them a little bit of a protection. I'm not sure what I'll do yet. Some kind of extra bark, maybe like a bucket over them, something like that to see if we can keep them alive in the ground. The coconut palm done. Uh, it, it did actually fine. It, at least it appeared to be fine as long as it was outside. And I left it outside until the last minute. Temperatures at night were in the high thirties and it didn't show any signs of fading at all. As soon as I brought it in the house, I had a humidifier running 24 hours a day right next to it. I came and sprayed it with water, gave it some mist two to four times a day it still only lasted a week or so inside the house before it started showing signs of deterioration and dried up and yeah, not, not happy at all. Fun experiment. I probably wouldn't try this again. I don't know what else I can do reasonably within my house. That might be the only time I try that. The Heliconia Lobster Claw, while it's not looking great, that's my own fault from last year. I put this out a little bit too quickly and it got sunburned, took a, a pretty bad beating at that point, but it survived just fine in the winter. It's pushing out new growth this year and it looks like it will be fine. I'm going to put it in a mostly shady spot here and hope that it keeps pushing out new growth and continues to get larger. The Bird of Paradise, this was a late season pickup from Home Depot on discount. Actually had two plants in the pot and uh, was eventually able to divide those. So I got two Birds of Paradise for 30 bucks. They did well. These were indoors for the winter. Had no issues with them at all. Happy and healthy and ready for another summer in the warmth. Next, let's look at the Sable Miner. So I have two of these. One of them I put in the ground last summer. The other one is still in a pot. The one in the pot I did bring in for the winter. No point in exposing it to the elements if you don't have to. And it's doing great. It's super healthy. This is five-ish years old now. Uh, well, I should say I've had it for five years. It was maybe a year or two old when I got it. The one from the indoors is doing well. It's big, healthy, green. Everything's great there. The one I put in the ground really struggled and it, it's not, I don't know if this is going to survive. I mean, it looks like it has a little bit of green in the center there, so it's not totally dead, but lost almost all of its fronds. There's not much left to it. So we'll have to monitor this one. It, it might not make it. Um, and again, we didn't have super cold winter, but uh, did not do well outside. Next, let's look at the double Mahoy banana. This is one I got just because I thought it was cool um, and figured I'd give it a try. It actually did really well indoors for the winter. Now it looks kind of sad because I brought it out as I usually do. I move them too fast and they get burned. So it took some burn from the sun from when I moved it out. Uh, but it's doing well. It's got a pup growing and I'm looking forward to getting this thing even bigger over this next year. The Musa Zabrina, I haven't seen it grow back at all. I put a couple of these in the ground. I never actually wanted these. Uh, this was something that came one of the times that I tried to order uh, Musa Sikimensis. They sent these instead. Uh, so whatever i'll put them in the ground see if they come back they haven't shown any signs of coming back at all um i don't really care uh, because they're not great bananas and there's no real reason to grow them uh, at least for me around here so not a huge loss but those those are done we've got a chilean fire tree this 
did really well. I had ordered two of them. One of them died uh, after a few months. They tell you not to leave them in pots, that they don't do well in pots. I just am not ready to commit this thing to a spot in the ground yet. Uh, just because they're very finicky and you can't really fertilize them at all or it'll kill them. So I've left it in the pot as I try and decide where am I going to put this thing. And it's done well. It's doubled in size. This one has and looks healthy, looks really green. Uh, and we're going to keep it in the pot for now uh, just until I can really commit to putting it in a spot. So I've got two pindo palms in the backyard. Both of these fared really well. These actually spent those two freezing weeks outside because these pots are so big. I decided to give it a go. Now I did push the pots up to the house. So they were right next to the house. They got covered with a tarp so they stayed dry during the coldest days. I did put Christmas lights on them as well. Uh, just some C7, so the smaller bulbs, not even the giant ones. It looks like they took next to no damage at all. So both of them are, are really green, not even burned out tips. Um, the, the little one has some damage from the previous winter uh, that I haven't removed, but uh, it, it doesn't look like they took any damage at all from this winter. They were out in the elements for 95% of the winter. So they were getting rained on every day for four months um, and saw low temperatures in the pots at like 25 Fahrenheit. So like four, negative four C. The Puerto Rican hat palm, I did keep this inside all winter. No reason to have it outside when it's this small. It did well, it put on an extra frond and we're ready to get this thing some more growth so that it can be bigger and more impressive. Now I do know there's one of these in the ground in Seattle. I haven't seen it myself. I've seen pictures of it, um, but it's been there for many years and uh, it is possible to keep these live outside. So eventually I do want to put this in the ground once it's bigger and has a little bit more of a trunk to it. Sable Palmetto. This is another palm that I got at the end of last summer, I decided to just leave it inside. No point in putting it outside if you don't have to. So it stayed inside for the winter. It's doing fine. Um, didn't put on a lot of new growth over the winter, but that's okay. Um, we'll uh, get this thing into the sun and get it some warm temps this summer and hopefully put a little bit more size on it. We've got a Camerops humilis. This is the third year that I've had this palm. I bought it as a tiny little thing from one of the local nurseries. It's been in a pot the whole time and it's done pretty well. This one I also leave out for most of the elements. Because it's in a pot, I did bring it in for those two weeks that had the really low temps and did not get above freezing for the week. But other than that, this thing sits outside. So it does see freezing temperatures. It sees our full rain uh, and it's doing pretty well, uh, all things considered. So it looks healthy. It does get a little bit of discoloration, um, but nothing crazy. And we are uh, hopefully getting to a spot where this will start putting on a little bit more size as well. Blue Javas, I put three of these in the ground at the beginning of spring last year. They're showing no signs of coming back. Now I did wrap all three of them, uh, but even with that, they, they were wrapped in bubble wrap and had leaves piled up around the base. So they were pretty well insulated and should have been able to survive the cold. I think this is a plant that couldn't survive the wet. And so just having a soaking wet ground for months straight, these are showing no signs of coming back at this point. Now I did have some that I kept inside and those did okay. They don't seem to do great indoors. Um, at least the ones I have have not. I've gotten two different batches of them, um, different sizes and different pots and they, they seem to kind of struggle through and make it, but um, yeah, this might 
this might be the end of my blue java trials just because uh to me there's no point in growing them if i can't get them to stay alive for more than a season let's take a look at the mule palms and see how those did now if you caught some of my other videos you'll know that these did okay at the beginning of the winter but ultimately had spear pull on both of them they didn't see the super low temperatures i had them inside for those weeks and other than that didn't see anything really below freezing i think they pulled because i put them under the cedar tree so they could get better sun during the winter and some of the dead cedar needles fell down into the crown as soon as i noticed they were having problems i pulled them out of the weather put them under cover started treating them with hydrogen peroxide and copper fungicide and i'm happy to say that both of them are pushing out new spears now they look like they're both gonna make it and be just fine now the surprise of the winter the royal poinciana looks to have pulled through now this is a tree that's very tropical you only find it in the u.s in the southern tip of florida like miami and south northern florida central florida too cold for this plant to grow outside if it gets any frost at all it's dead mine started dropping leaves at 55 degrees fahrenheit so that's what uh 15 c or so um started dropping leaves at that point and i was worried that it knowing that the coconut palm probably wasn't going to make it i didn't think this had any chance but surprisingly enough it has pulled through and we're going to see this another year and i'm pretty excited about that because it, it one of my favorite trees again from living in puerto rico these things are all over the island so happy to have one for a second summer that i don't have to buy again so that's it. There's a view of what died and what lived in my yard, zone 8A or 8B, depending on the year, just south of Seattle, Washington. Mm -hmm.